Hey, welcome back. I'm the Zim. This is the Zim video. This is going to be another kind of stream of consciousness um, video I'm making for you. And it's uh, an update on my pelvic floor issues, I guess you could say. Uh, a few months ago, or maybe even longer now, I made a video about my going to have a cystoscopy and, and a urinalysis done for some of the issues. Let me the way I'll do this video is just give you a up, quick update on what the general, the big picture issue is, and then kind of bring you up to date with what's currently been happening, and we'll kind of talk about it. Um, so the the history of it, you can watch that old video. I, I tell some history in there, but that the old video was mainly just to tell you my experience with doing those two procedures. But the history is I've had this chronic kind of pelvic floor issue where I, um, you know, combination of burning sensation when urinating, not unable to urinate easily. Um, you know, uh, those are the main things of free feeling urgent at times and stuff. And so I've been under like a pretty intense investigation on why this is happening, why my body does it like this. And I haven't known for a long time and the thing I came across recently, well, so recently I had a kind of a pretty severe issue that was diagnosed as uh, like prostatitis and I was given antibiotics, but I was diagnosed without any like medical like um, tests or anything. There was no like, let's actually see if there's an infection. It was all based on this is what it feels like. Oh, that's what you have. So... And I don't think that was totally accurate because of what I've learned since. And it's a bit, that process, and I also got, um, I also got prescribed some, or not prescribed, but a, samples of like urgency medication. I don't remember what it's called. Some medication that would maybe help um, overactive bladder situation. It was just like, I was just having a pretty severe um, discomfort in my pelvic floor area. And it was, no, I wasn't, I wasn't feeling it. So I started to like really investigate more and I just wasn't confident that, that it was a, like the medical, it was a medical issue like they were like describing. And so what I ended up doing was I came across a book called, um, pain, headache in the pelvis by David Wise, PhD and Rodney Anderson, MD, which describes a uh, protocol called the wise Anderson protocol and I'm gonna go into that a little bit and that's once I started reading that book I was like this is it this is this explains exactly what I've been dealing with for 20 plus years like the examples the the clinical examples they had of other patients and just how they described it and all this stuff because it was very parallel with what how they described it, it was like prescribed medications nothing ever seemed to make a difference and things like that, plus the the description of the pain they were talking about and different things like that. So I was like, okay, this seems to be a great, this seems to parallel exactly what's going on. And even, even described in the book, once I was able to understand that, oh, this is what's going on, my symptoms relieved a little bit. And that's, they say, can happen. When you start to understand what's going on, you can, um, you can, feel better and start to feel better. And so and that happened to me. And so in the, so in reading the book, I decided to take some action and let me explain some things about the book first. So like if you're having pelvic floor discomfort, um, things like you've been, you know, labeled or diagnosed with chronic prostatitis or things of that nature. Um, other, there's other pains, a whole bunch of different kinds of pains, um, in that area. This book could give you a really good indication of what is going on with you. They do a really good job of explaining what's going on and and the history of how medical medicine right now doesn't hasn't really caught up to they don't really understand everything about the pelvic floor and the prostate and other things in that area both for both men and women. And so it's misdiagnosed continually still medical medical current medical practices don't fully understand it and that's what was happening to me the the 
the ur urologists and whatnot I was seeing really didn't have a, weren't willing to explore a full spectrum of let's try this, let's try this. It was, it was kind of always directly to let's medicate it. Let's give you medicine. And it was, and so a long time, I should mention as well, a long time ago when I was exploring what was going on with my pelvic floor, somebody, one of like the, like the physic, like the physician's assistants mentioned something, you should read pain, headache in my pelvis or something, but I never quite like, I never, I never did it. And I just kind of, cause we were doing things and I thought it, I don't know. I just it just never put it together. But I remembered that when this new kind of experience started happening, and that was one of the things that made me go research the book. I was like, I'm gonna go find this book and read it. And so I read it, and I was like, Whoa, this is exactly what's been going on with me for 20 plus years. And then so what the book does as well is you know explains it all very like in detail what's going on, but there is zero like what to do about it. There's nothing in the book about this is what you should try. This is what, it's all like, it's like a really thick, and I bought it digitally, so I don't know how big the book is, but um, it's just a big, very wordy, like sales pitch for you to go to the clinic that um, David and Rodney run, I guess, um, in like the San Francisco area. So and it's the only place, like they have this protocol they've come up with and it's like the only place you can do it and insurance doesn't tend to cover it and just different stuff and it cost about i got i emailed them and i got um some prices from them and it basically costs like forty five hundred dollars for the clinic itself and usually runs he said around eight hundred to fifteen hundred for food and lodging for the week and then if you're out of the area like i am you have to add travel expenses so I'll, I'm going to throw out a figure of like $6,000. You're looking at $6,000 for a week-long thing, and that's just not something that I felt like I could um, do. So I am not at this point, I'm not going to their clinic. Um, but what I have decided is I think I understand what it is they are trying to convey and how to build my own um build my own support in this Wise Anderson protocol because um, they don't give you any, this is what we do. This is the step by, they don't give you any step by steps. They don't give you any exercises. They don't give you anything of like, this is what you should do. It's all like, come to our clinic basically is kind of, if you think you have this, come to our clinic and we'll see if you're a good candidate for our procedure. So it, it was kind of frustrating in that way that it's like, okay, I understand what's going on with me, but I don't know how to to heal to heal it and i did a bunch of research on the internet on youtube trying to see what other people have done and different things and from the combination of the internet and the book i've kind of pieced together my own strategy on how to deal with it <clears throat> and the three there's three main factors that the book kind of conveyed to me and the first the first main factor is understanding like making sure it's not a medical it actually is a medical condition like making sure you don't have an infection of some or, or there's something like um other thing like like i did i had my urinalysis done i had the the cystoscopy done so both those things came across in a way that was like there's nothing go wrong going on what we discovered through that process was my sphincter muscle on my bladder was really tight so that was another thing that was telling me like yeah tightness in my muscle that's like that was telling me something that just was like a kind of um a metaphysical kind of explanation of what was going on with my body it's like tightness that that, that seems to resonate with me like stress tightness stress so remember that hold on to that idea and we'll get back to that in a minute so that the first part is you know making sure you have and so for, through the years through the 20 plus years of going to doctors getting prescribed things nothing making a difference i felt like i had the medical stuff like okay box checked okay that's that box is checked you know there's nothing there is no infection there is no nothing like that going on for me the next the next two steps are physical therapy and then um mental therapy like going see a therapist to figure out so the to figure out what's causing the the problem in a way because of with the tight like the pelvic floor muscles, basically what it is is a tight pelvic floor. It's like your pelvic floor not working functioning and 
your pelvic floor is a place in your body where you can store a lot of stress and tension. Like, you know, like a lot of people, I even st store a lot of tension in my shoulder here. I store tension in my neck. I store tension in a lot of different places in my body. And the, the, through my life, I've learned that the pelvic floor is another way I store tension. The problem with the pelvic floor is that it's not a muscle group that you can massage. Like you can massage your shoulder muscle. You can massage it out and work out that knot. There's no way, really, it's really difficult to actually physically massage out your pelvic floor muscle. You, you, there are ways to do it, kind of, but it's, it's, and that's kind of like the, um, kind of the cringe factor of the pelvic floor. And we'll get to that, <laughs> hold on to that thought in a second as well. And then there's also, so understanding like, okay, there's, it's more than just, um, it's more than just like a broken bone where you cast it and heal it. It's, there's a mental aspect of this. Why is my body storing this tension? What's going on in my body? So you have to work on your headspace to, to um, figure that out. So those are the three main sections. There was the medical part, the physical therapy part, and the mental therapy part. And so I was like, okay, I get it. Phys med medical therapy or medical part, check. Needed to find somebody that worked on pelvic floor muscles. And I t found out that it's not a common thing. Like, there's a lot of physical therapists that don't work on the pelvic floor, probably because it is a more sensitive area. It's there's it's just a harder muscle group to work with. You have to have more specialized training to work with it. I managed to find somebody in my area that does work with pelvic floor, and I've, I'm, I'm satisfied with the care I've been getting so far. So I feel good about that. And then I also signed up for um, a, uh, not signed up, but I found a, uh, therapists as well to work on just you know what's going on mentally what's going on in my body in my mind that's causing my, me to store tension so those are big things there's another piece to a very very important piece to figuring this out like if this could be something that you're going through and this makes sense to you and it sounds like your um this is a path to figure out is um it's a long slow process it's not a you know like like using the shoulder massage example again like you can go maybe a couple sessions of getting your shoulder worked out and you feel better with the pelvic floor muscle because of partly because of what i believe the style of muscle it is right your pelvic floor has to have tension to work function work properly because it holds in your bodily fluids so you have to have the tension but not too much tension that it causes you pain so it's like a very delicate muscle group to work on to um get to a place of balance and so that's so it takes a really long time and you have to be really gentle and patient with the process and then you also have to be willing to actually the i think i actually think probably the mental therapy part of it is even the hardest part you have to be willing to figure out what's your and that's a, that's really difficult for a lot of people. So it's you have to have like a a very committed effort into um, wanting to be healed from pelvic floor pain because it's like it's not an overnight kind of process. It's it could take months and years. Like I've been working now for a couple months or so on this, and it's I'd say it's moved like if this is where it started it's moved like this you know it's not it hasn't moved very far in terms of feeling um but i do feel i feel like there is progress but it's it's such a slow muscle and like such a slow process and part of it one of the descriptions for the pelvic floor is it's a shy muscle group is one one way of putting it um there's a couple other ways that people have described the pelvic floor muscle it's just it takes a lot of and even in the book headache in the in the pelvis he he says the same they say the same thing in the book with like you know it's like a it's like a scared you know scared child or scared animal and you have to be very gentle to kind of like let it come out and and understanding how that is and what what you need to do to make that possible um is uh it takes a while to learn so the one part, so, okay, so 
so once I figured that all out, once I figured, I think, I feel confident that I can build my own Wise Anderson protocol, essentially, um, and and find people in my area. Maybe some of them will be under insurance, maybe not. I'm currently, my both my physical therapist and my other, my mental therapist, I'll say, is um, both, they're not covered under insurance. I pay out of pocket for both of them. Um, and, but it was like, this is important enough for me to figure out. And it just, this seemed like a better way for me to do it than spending $6,000 at once and trying to find the time and to, to go somewhere. And I have somebody local to my area and I, something I can access on a regular basis. So that was important to me. So what am I doing? So at this point, so the one piece if you've done the research um, about this whole process, the one piece that's kind of possibly the scariest is in the physical therapy aspect of it. There's a potential that you will need to have someone or something inserted inside of your body to relax your muscles, um, to help massage your muscles. I personally have not done that part yet. There, My physical therapist, this is the approach my physical therapist has made is going, let's work on everything external. And then I'm also doing the mental stuff because there's a lot of muscle groups, like, like there's a lot of muscle groups that, you know, if you're holding tension in other areas, it's like, you want to, you want to, it's a holistic approach. You know, you don't want to just work on one muscle group. You need to work on, and there's a lot of things that help the pelvic floor, relax that can be done externally like fixing your posture if it's wrong fixing your hip alignment if it's if it's messed up other muscles like for me my inner thigh muscles are extremely tight and that's part of you know it goes right into the pelvic floor area so working on relaxing those muscles um and and those kind of things so as of as so i guess what i'm saying is don't let the idea of that you're going to get a finger or rod or some kind of wand or whatever stuck up your butt or inside of your body scare you off from finding out what's happening because a that probably won't happen the very first time you go and maybe it might not even need to happen at all because there's lots of other things how you breathe breathing exercises diaphragm work other there are other things that can be done that you don't it might not be that extreme for you at all or or, you know, or at least for a while until you figure out what your whole body is doing. So that's something to keep in mind. So in this process, and these are some, I'm going to tell you some of the exercises, some of the, the um, we'll talk about physical therapy more, and then we'll talk about the mental therapy stuff. So let me tell you some of the things that I'm doing um, in terms of the physical therapy part. And then, and this is, you know, these are things that, you know, may not work for you, but they are just to give your mind, give your thought process an idea of like, oh, these are things I didn't think of possibly, hopefully. And what my, in my research, and then when I actually started going to see a physical therapist, these are some of the things that she, we agreed on. So basically before I saw the physical therapist, the research I did online, a couple of the exercises are like happy baby, Happy baby was a big one. Happy baby style exercises where you're, you know, bringing your legs up in and pulling down and opening, hopefully opening your pelvic floor area a little bit more. That's that was the main one. And then she, my physical therapist gave me this one where I it's kind of the same idea where you're put your you're laying on the ground, your back is uh, your butt essentially is against the wall and your feet are up, and then you come down with like lotus position, I guess, kind of. And it just helps open up the pelvic floor. That seems to, I don't, in terms of the sensation, it feels good. It feels like, okay, this feels like there's opening and stretching going on in the pelvic floor area. That feels good. Um, so those are those are two that start of the doing cat-cow breathing type and, and core muscles. So core muscles are something that we're working a lot on, my core. Um, so we're doing cat-cow and breathe and then like, other core muscles, like I do this one where I lay down on a foam roller and I press my core down against the foam roller and I do arm lifts and leg lifts to help strengthen my, my core muscles. We're do, working on some using the elastic band where we do a variety of stuff with elastic band tied to like a doorknob 
and I'm work doing s different exercises that will strengthen my core muscle in there. So core is a big part of that whole thing. While in when I go to sessions, she does a lot to adjust my hip and then does, like I said already, my my um, inner thigh area is really tight and she kind of massages those areas and tries to loosen up the muscles in there. So there's a lot of external muscles. And then we're also working on my posture because that supposedly like is part, like how your core is engaging is if you're hunched over and just different things like that. And it all kind of relates down into the pelvic floor. So there's a lot of external exercises that we're doing um, right now to try to just make sure everything externally is going good and then seeing where that goes, like seeing how that helps. And the breathing part is huge, like, you know, doing Kegel-like exercises. So one of the things that worked, actually worked a bit for me is there's this urgency aspect of this whole process as well that I go through. And I learned that if you, like, if you, you do a Kegel where you clench for like 10 seconds, release, and then clench for 10 seconds to release and, and do it one more time, like three times in a row. Like I would usually use it like when, if I've gone to the bathroom, it's for bladder retraining. And if I've gone to the bathroom and, and then I feel like I have to go again within like an hour of just going, uh, it's like, that's too soon. If I get that urgent feeling, I do this exercise and it gives me a little more time. It like actually kind of relieves and you're kind of like, there's something in the science of the Kegel uh, exercise that, actually um tells your your nervous system it's not time to go again yet so there's some bladder retraining that's going on as well that i'm working on and then um just breathing in general like the kegel as well as breathing like when i do the cat cows like when you take a deep breath in try to fill your belly and push your like your uh, muscles downward to try to open up your pelvic floor and then when you breathe out you kind of clench in a little because there's a combination even though even though we want to re like for my situation i want to relax the muscles it's like relaxing the muscles is important but you can't do it only one direction you have to remind your muscles to contract as well so that the relaxing can happen as well because you'll start to confuse it if you only go one way that's what i've been learning so far it's like you can't just go one way you can't go all relaxing you have to go contraction as well and then also relaxing so those are kind of the, um, what we've been working on mostly lately. And I've been doing religiously every day I do these exercises. And that's a big part of it is every, as many, it's, I don't make it every day often, but that's the goal. It's most days a week. It's probably five days a week, at least out of a seven day work uh, week. But it's the goal is to be religious about it and do this every day. And then the other part, <clears throat> Well, there's another piece that I started doing on my own, but it kind of relates into the, and I'll use this as my bridge to the mental therapy part, is meditation. I've started meditating every day. I found a couple meditations online, and I'll just put them, there's just two that I use right now. I'll put them in the description of this so that you can get started. There's 10-minute meditations just to calm the body and calm the mind is, is really like what it's for. And it just, and I'm... I'm just like all in on that aspect. Like it's this getting your pelvic floor to do what you want it to do is a very holistic, challenging thing to do. You, it's not an. It, there's no easy out for this. This is like a commitment, and and I'm willing. Like I'm willing to make that commitment because it's worth it to me. Because having to go to the bathroom and having pain in that area in a way that's just not fun. It's just it it as you know if you're dealing with this it's like it affects your whole life it affects your social life it affects your confidence it affects everything about you and so like i don't know it's just the, the i think the the biggest thing to remember for me this is what i'm trying to remember is that it, it's not a quick fix it's a slow 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 process and it's about going going through, even if you don't understand it i don't fully understand everything about it I just have faith and I believe that going through these motions, it'll start to tell my body like the proper way, the way I want it to work. So that's a big thing. So the, so the, the, the meditation was big and that's, I got out of the um, 
headache in the pelvis book, they talked a little bit about meditation as well. And I was like, okay, this is important. I've been, you know, and just in life in general, knowing that tension, I knew tension was a big culprit of this whole process for me. And, you know, I think it's pretty well accepted, universally accepted that meditating helps relieve tension, stress, and different things like that. And so I wanted to start to go actively toward that goal and toward that experience and toward that religion of meditating to a place where I could use it on command and also understand it and just get deeper with this this idea of relaxing my body and mind through meditation. So that's been a big goal of mine as well. So and I'll use that to bridge to the, the, the mental therapy stuff. And that's a big, big piece. Like I think I mentioned already, it's probably the hardest part because it's like it means you have to do some work. It means you have to face your potentially face your demons. It means you might have to find something out about yourself that you don't like and, and really just address it and and change your patterns and change your rhythms and change your ideas. And you have to be open to it. Um, you have to be willing to to do those things and that's that can be tough because i don't know from my experience i believe kind of humans are creatures of habit and we not only we're creatures of habit but there's this idea that we get comfort in our discomfort you know we we are so used to doing something a certain way even though it's not the best way even though we know it causes us or maybe we don't know it causes us pain but we're so used to doing something a way that we think that's the way it, it is we think that's the only way it happens we're comfortable in it, we just do it, we just deal with it and whatever. But if you're willing to say maybe there is a better way for this, maybe there is a better thought process, then that's where the challenge comes. And um, for me, some of the things that I know, I already know I deal with a high level of anxiety, tension. It's like, that's why I was like, for years I've been dealing with anxiety. Um, for tension, anxiety is a kind of tension in your body, in your mind. Um, Obviously, there's physical tension going on that we learned from the from the, um, your analysis, um, and then just I um, also hold tension in a lot of other places. Like you know, I, I know my body has this um, history of holding tension. So to me, it's just it made so much sense. Like th what's going on in my pelvic floor has so much to do with what's going on in my head. It just made too much sense. The parallels there were too much made too much sense and as i've gone through this process of kind of looking at my life and going like whoa when did this start where am i at today what has happened along that way and since it's been 20 years i have a long history to look at and sometimes you know it's easier to see trends the farther away you are from them because you you can kind of that's why like you know as we know like when we're in a decade, when we're in, a, when we're right now here today, we don't know what's going to be cool until ten years from now. When we look back, oh, those were all the popular songs, and those were all that was the popular clothing style and that kind of stuff. Whereas, you know, that because like the '80s have a style, the '70s have a style, the '60s have a style. When we look back, we go, oh yeah, those. It's obvious. And so for me, I've had, I've had twenty years of looking back, so I have two decades of like, okay, that's what was going on, um, and I I see the strength where things where stressful points of my life happened and how my pelvic floor issues kind of changed through those through that and they were very parallel and so it kind of like for me it's like oh my god this makes so much sense and so spending the time now my goal now is to go and look at those issues and go what caused those stresses am i still holding on to it because i still am i know that and and trying to unwrap it trying to figure out the what the story is I'm telling my my body and mind that creates anxiety and creates things. And one of the things I've discovered is this idea, like around when I was 13 years old, I, um, you know, the trauma of my life, of like how I was raised and how, what happened in my life during that time, a combination of like my parents fighting a lot and I'm dyslexic. So my learning style was different, having to, you know, just different things like, being socially accepted, um, just there's little things that can pile up and create a big thing and create tension, you create create stresses, create sickness in your body that you may you might not even realize, and that's why I feel very confident has happened to me. So that was kind of where uh, in a lot of ways where it all started. So I'm I'm trying to address those things and 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 tell that you know 13 year old me that's still inside of me that life is going to be okay 
things are okay and give it the comfort that it needs to not be as anxious and not be as um, stressed out and not and not hold on to tension. So that's just one example. There's and as you start to go down this mental road, you it's like an onion, right? You start to peel you you discover one thing about yourself, and then you peel it off and you go, okay, that makes sense now that that that's why that is and that relates to that other thing. And then you have these potentially have like for me, I have these like feedback loops inside my body, inside my mind that's like even though maybe the original thing that's causing the stress isn't really um, valid anymore, you know, the anxiety that caused that has fed over to like my pelvic floor issue where I get really anxious about going to the bathroom now. So it's like, okay, my anxiety has jumped to the thing that caused my pelvic floor problem has, the anxiety has now jumped to the pelvic floor all by itself and that's creating its own feedback loop. So there's things there's a lots of layers for me that I have to work out and work through to, to, to solve all this. And it takes time. And it's like, that's another, it's just, there's no way. And then what I've noticed as well for myself is as you expose yourself, as you become more vulnerable to wanting to find out what, how you were built and how I'm made, how I'm made as a person, why I think the way I do, it, it potentially can make things worse for a while because it's like, you're, you opened up, you let down the, the guards that you were using to protect yourself. So now you're more vulnerable and now things could be worse a while until you retrain your mind and retrain your thoughts to navigate instead of using anger or instead of using the old defenses to protect yourself, you have to set in new defenses to protect yourself or to not necessarily even protect yourself anymore, but like you have to have new pathways within your mind to figure out, um, how to navigate life and how to um, not be as not hold on attention, not be as stressed. So there's a lot, there's a lot there. So it's a, like I said, um, it's a, a, it's an incredible commitment to um, go down this path. So I hope, uh, I guess the, let me just say now, I think that sums up kind of all my points, what I wanted to share, because the main thing I just wanted to, if you are in this idea or if you're confused about what's going on with you or if you've been continually diagnosed medically but maybe it has maybe it has more to do with your mind and your body than than like an infection or something like that with this whole pelvic floor and so i just encourage you to explore those options and look into them do some research read read the headache in the pelvis even though it doesn't tell you anything other than what it could be um it still could it could alleviate your mind. It could help you feel relaxed a little bit more. Going, oh, that's this. These are this is exactly what I've been dealing with for years. Because as we know, you know, you could get you could be ruined by if you're giving if you're being prescribed too many antibiotics and it's not solving the problem. You're you could be ruining yourself more than helping yourself because antibiotics are you know you got to be careful. They're they're great. They're a great medical thing that's used to help. Why they also, if they're misused, they can hurt, as we know. Um, but is this, I just hope that maybe you could think about what's going on in a different way based on my story, and I'll keep you updated. Like, I, I don't, like I said, I don't feel like I've made a lot of progress yet, but I feel like there's hope. I feel like there's hope on the horizon. I feel like I'm understanding what's going on with my body in a way that I've never had before. And I feel like I'm in a, going in a good direction with all this. And, um, and my, my goal is to have relief, you know, not have the pain anymore, especially not have the pain to a degree where it feels like there is no hope. Like right now I'm in a good spot. Like it's tolerable. I'm in a good place. I'm, you know, it's not perfect by any means, but it's not, I'm not like, I'm not feeling, um, like out of control. I'm feeling like I have control over the situation more than I did a few months ago. A few months ago, it got pretty bad for me, but I'm in a good space now. All right, well, that's it. I hope this, like I said, I hope this is helpful. And um, if you have any questions for me, hit them up in the comments, and I'd be happy to talk about it with you. Peace.